Next question. <laughs> um, what can a person do when they feel spiritually dry in their walk? Spiritually dry. What should a person do when they feel? You know, the first thing I would say is make sure you get around some people. You know that um that are um beneficial to your life. You know. A lot of times when we get to those dry places, we start isolating ourselves. We get by ourselves, you know. Why, why are you laughing? Oh, because I've been there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See, and that's the enemy's this that's the enemy's trap. What he first the first thing he does is gets you saying, Oh well, you know, today you don't feel like going to church. So don't go to church today. <laughs> today is not the day you want to go to church. But when you're spilling dry, that's the day you want to go to church. <laughs> because you need a revival in your soul. So you, what, what, come on, the devil is the only person going to tell you not to go to church. <laughs> come on. This is why we got to be careful um, and sensitive to the, to the things of God and, and understand when it's the enemy speaking versus when it's God speaking. Okay. You know, every person goes through a dry period in their life. Every person goes through that time where they don't feel so holy. Holy Ghost fire that time, ready to run for their life. Everybody go through. Everybody go through that. But how you deal with that moment is very critical because that the way you deal with that moment is going to be the is going to be the the, the the point of saving your life or putting your life in jeopardy of being lost. There are many Christians today that are lost because they couldn't get past their dry moment. Okay? Um, Paul said it this way. He said, for the sufferings of your present time are not worthy to be compared to the things that God is going to reveal in you, that he's going to reveal. There are things that God wants to reveal in you. So every time you're going through a dry point in your life, doesn't mean that it's a dry moment. It just means that God is putting you through a process of revealing. Okay? So he puts you through that process, not for you to, to fall back, but he's trying to fortify you and build character in you so that you're like, you wait a minute, hold on a second, devil is a lie. I am not staying home today. I'm going to church. Not only am I going to church because I need to be around the saints, but I'm going to church because I realize there's a reason for me being there. Somebody is lost and don't have the privilege of saying that they have Christ in their life. And when I go to church, I'm not just going for my own personal desires, but I go I go to church because there are people who are lost, people who are people who are in the church that are going through the same thing that you're going through and dealing with the same issues that you're dealing with. And guess what? You the Bible says iron sharpens iron. I don't know if it says putty sharp as putty, but I know it says iron sharp as iron, which means you got to be iron first, baby. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? You got to first show yourself having the ability to get past those moments when the enemy is trying to fight you. And that strength that you, that you bring to the table is what fortifies somebody else to be able to get up and revive their spirit. So we all go through dry moments, but how you deal with that dry moment is really going to be predicated on how um, how the results of that dry moment is going to, what the, re the results of that dry moment is going to cause in your life. You don't have to be dry just because you feel dry. You can still be spunky and still praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, as a leader, you 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 must learn how to get past those moments. There are times when I'm up preaching and I'm numb. And I'm strictly going on on what you call auto Holy Ghost pilot. I I, I mean
There are times when you don't know what you're going to say, how you're going to say it, what you're going to do. And uh, you got to just solely rely on the Holy Ghost to reveal all things to you, speak for you, do for you, because your physical body is tired. And you're feeling dry within your spirit. And, every, you know, it, it, a, a great preacher will learn how to preach to themselves first. And I, I've learned how to preach myself into a revival. Okay? And when you begin to preach yourself into that revival, you grasp the same thing that everybody else is grasping. You get that revelation the same way everybody else is getting it. Let me tell you something. When worship comes, and that's another thing, because if, if you allow worship, to be a part of your life. See, all right, let me give you the difference because, see, a lot of people pray, right? But most people don't worship. And this is the reason why you're dry. Whew, I just felt the Holy Ghost. Because remember, Jesus told the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman at the well, he said, I asked you for water, right? He asked her for water, but he said, but I'm getting ready. I'm going to give you water, rivers of water, that, and and then your belly shall flow rivers of water that you, you will never run dry, right? Mm -hmm. But it led up to the point of him saying, today, you guys, you serve this mountain. You serve at this mountain, but there will come a day where you will worship me in spirit and in truth. The reason why most people have these dry spells is because they don't know how to tap into the well of worship. Whew, good Lord, let me. <laughs> Somebody say the well of worship. Because if you tap into worship. the well of worship, you will never run dry. You never run dry. That's worship can happen at any moment. You could be washing the dishes. <laughs> While you're washing the dishes, say, Lord, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I love you. See, because when you begin to just give God adoration, you begin to exalt him and you begin to uh you begin to glorify him. Um you you are able to now, you are now able to um to, to overcome situations that are happening around you and the spirits that are trying to uh, uh, come into your home, okay? And you could turn on some nice worship music. I didn't say no crazy okay. stuff, but some worship music and allow that music to, to seep into your spirit and allow and saturate your atmosphere. And this will cause your well, your dry well, to overflow with rivers of living water. Mm -mm -mm. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. <laughs> See, it's something about worship because most people have come to, have been in church all their lives and never really experienced worship. Let me tell you, I I, I was in church all my life, right? But I didn't really experience true worship until I went to a, ch a church called True Worship. <laughs> I'm telling you, I knew how to praise. Let me tell you, I get into a good praise. I could get into that mode of being delivered, right? But when I went to True Worship, I met a young man by the name of uh, Pastor uh, Courtney Bradley. And I watched him worshiping. And I was like, this is something else. Because it was something different about what was taking place in the atmosphere. It wasn't just people just praying. Ah, nah, 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 nah. Nothing wrong with that, right? Because there's a place for that. Because prayer, watch this now. Prayer, we, we sometimes become a little selfish. Because we're praying for our children. We're praying for this one. We're praying for this. God, get this stuff off of me. Get out of there. But when you are worshiping, you get rid of yourself and you just admire God. Whoo! Good Lord. Whoo! 
It's something about when you begin to admire God for who he is and you just begin to say, Lord, I thank you. I, I, I adore you. I exhort you. I love you. He comes down. He's saying, who they loving on me? They kissing on me. I'm telling you. And it's a certain response that he has to that worship. It's totally different to the prayer. He comes and he sups with you and he, he, he communes with you and he's fellowshipping with you versus, okay, he's coming down to be your superhero again. It's two different stories. And there's nothing wrong with praying. We need to pray because we need to be in the right frame of mind to even get to that place of worship. But if you ever can tap in to your worship with God, let me tell you something. Even when a dry moment begins to try to appear in your life, you'll find your way to steal away and just get in the presence of God. Worship is important. Amen? Amen. Hey, um, Sister Angela. All right, Montre. <laughs> um, I know I mentioned this question to you before. Uh, what practical things can you do to make in-person evangelism easier? Um. Okay, when you're in person? Mm -hmm. Well, w the first thing I would say is, you know, a lot of people... You know, the first thing I would say is that don't be confrontational. You don't have to prove anything. Just be the light. You know, a lot of people, instead of just letting the light shine, they want to try to, okay, here, here, here it goes. Uh, um. Um, here it goes. Let me shove it down your throat. That's not how you do it. You let the light of God shine. And, and you got to understand, you got to know what is the purpose of you actually speaking to this purpose, person. Let me tell you something. One of the most important parts of evangelizing is not talking. It's listening. Because people are broken and they don't need you preaching to them. They need to, they need you to be able to, when you get ready to respond, they need you to be able to accurately respond to the questions or the, the, the desires and the things that are challenging them in their hearts. If you miss the points that they're dealing with, then you miss your opportunity to be the answer you know jesus the bible says well we we go jesus is the answer for the world today guess what we become the voice of his answers but if you don't know how to respond to a person that's in trouble or in pain and you don't respond with soft words and soft with love and kindness, then you, you become the very stumbling block to people trying to get to Christ. The reason why a lot of people don't want to come to church is because some of these Christians are hard. I mean, they are hard. They're like, yeah, you know, the Bible says, yeah, yeah. if you don't drink two glasses of water two times a day, the devil, are you serious right now? Come on. You got to show love. How about just be yourself? You know, everything don't have to be a scripture, Right? Everything doesn't have to be, oh, what well, the Bible says, you know, in Romans, you know. And, and this is this is another thing, because people wonder why those who are, are challenged with their sexuality don't really get delivered. It's because we who are believers don't really know how to, to, to deal with them 
from a place of compassion and love. When you begin to deal with people with from a place of compassion and love, because remember, the whole purpose of Christ's coming is because of love. So then you're going to go, oh, well, the Bible says you ain't supposed to do that. That's not love. And you know you're going to have good results. It goes right back to anger. Because some people are angry Christians. How are you going to be angry because somebody's, somebody's in a place where you used to be? I won't know. How are you going to be angry with somebody that, you know, that's, that's, that's drinking and you know you just came from drinking? Oh, girl, you need to stop doing that. You need to stop. You need to. No, 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 no. You know, the Bible says, judge not lest you be judged. The reality is, is that we all have come from somewhere. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. But we all have a right to the grace of God, too. And that grace should not just show up when God shows up. It should show up when you show up because God should be in you. Whew, good Lord. I felt that in the Holy Ghost. You know, people waiting, you know, people waiting for their family members to get delivered when in fact they have not been delivered and and and, and, and are not uh, walking fully in the grace that they, they preach about. You got to understand that grace is empowerment. It is not an, a, a reason to continue in sin. Grace empowers you. It empowers you to be able to live right, to walk right, to, to be able to sustain yourself, to, to, to pull you away from things that you used to do, right? So when I'm talking to somebody, I'm understanding that I've been graced to be able to stand before this person. So I'm, a, I'm the first recipient of grace. So I'm going to share my grace with you. I'm not sharing my ideas with you, but I'm going to share my testimony because this is how you're going to overcome. I had a situation where um, I was talking to a Muslim one day. And this guy was going in, he was like, I'm this, you know, oh, you know, the Bible is this. And then you, I said, but listen, this is what I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you because I, I don't, I don't do the arguing thing. You know, what I will tell you is I know um, I, I was in a situation, like, I'll just give you my testimony, where I was in a car accident and in this car accident, um, uh, I was supposed to be dead. But I called on the name of Jesus. And when I called on the name of Jesus, that which was supposed to happen changed. I'm talking about miraculously. I'm talking about a miracle. So I'm telling you that the name of Jesus works. All I want to know is, do you get the same results from Muhammad? That's all I'm saying. Because <laughs> the results that I get from the name of Jesus it's evident in my life. And all I'm saying to you is reevaluate what you believe in it. Now, to some for some people, they try to get into an argument going back and forth. Listen, I don't listen. All I'm saying, I believe in Jesus, and Jesus works for me, right? Jesus died on the cross. They don't believe in half of that. You, you understand what I'm saying? So you, some people don't even believe half of the stuff you're talking. So that's why I say it's important to listen first. Because some stuff that you might say will go right over their head. Can I help you as an evangelist? As a person that is a believer of God, right? You are just a messenger. That's it. My mailman came to my uh, mailbox the other day. When he came to my mailbox, he dropped off my mail. I, I wanted to ask him, why do you keep sending me these bills? But he kept going. <laughs> right? But he kept going. He was on off to the next house. Do you get where I'm coming from? A messenger does not sit around Okay, waiting to see if the tree is going to grow. Okay, and what I mean by that, that doesn't mean that you don't cultivate and, 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 and encourage a person after you've given them the word, but it is not for you to sit there and, and be like, 
well, you know, you don't seem to be getting it. Well, are you serious? People get upset. And they get into arguments. No, you don't get no argument. Listen, I dropped the seed. I dropped the word. May the love of God continue to bless you. And you keep it moving. Talk about something else. I'm telling you, if you just live the life, they're going to want to know what you're doing. Let your light so shine. It's ain't you got to open your, you ain't got to say nothing. Half of the time, you don't have to say a word. Just let your light so shine that men might see the love of Christ in you. They might see the love of God in you. It's all about Christ, bro. God bless you. <laughs> John. It's here, baby. We here. Go ahead. All right. This next question, someone actually asked me this on YouTube, and it got into sort of an argument with a bunch of my other viewers. So the person asked me to ask you your opinion. <laughs> Bring it on. I'm going to settle the argument. The argument <laughs> is over. Can women be pastors and bishops? The Bible says in in um in uh in which is in, in Joel that in the last days he's gonna pour out his spirit on all flesh. Right? Um so as far as women's being pastors. You know, you have a lot of people, and, and this is the thing that kills me, you know. My thing is, <laughs> right? Because if you're not doing the work, what difference does it make? Like, mm -hmm. even if I'm a bishop, right, and I, and I don't believe in women bishop, if that woman bishop is out there saving souls, why am I messing with her? Are you serious? I come from under a, 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 a woman bishop. How about that? <laughs> you don't like me no more? Come on. <laughs> Pastor Daisy Garvin was a bishop, right? And I remember back on in those days, you know, you know women, oh, women bishops, oh, that, this is not, this is unheard of. But they're the ones doing the work. As a matter of fact, how about all you bishops that don't believe that women should be pastors, how about you get rid of all the women in your church and see how much of a church you have? Come on. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> you, got to, you got to be, come on now. The mm -hmm. woman was the first one to carry the word. Hello, that's what, my <laughs> wife reminds me of that every day. Mary carried the word. I was like, oh, well, listen, you, you got me, honey. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Come on. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff with the bishop and all of that stuff is internal issues when we're supposed to be trying to save the world. Then why would you try to get rid of the main help You know, that's why, you know, we're supposed to be we're supposed to be um having a service for the, the ordination of my, my wife and all that good stuff. You know, I don't have a problem with my wife being a pastor. Come on. We're partners. We're one. So if I'm a pastor, she's a pastor. If I'm if I'm apostle, she's an apostle. If I'm a bishop, <laughs> she's a bishop. How about that? Bishop first lady. <laughs> that's if you really living by the one principle see because a lot of these men don't really feel like they one with their spouse but that's not me I am one with my spouse I love my wife okay I, I understand her purpose and this is the reason why many many people right now suffer because and many marriages are suffering because they don't want to acknowledge that their wife is just as important as they are in ministry 
My wife is the birthplace to my purpose. The same way she birthed my children is the same way she's going to birth my word. And she's going to birth the children that God brings me, the spiritual children that he brings me. So I don't understand it. And, and, and I believe if we operate like that in the kingdom of God, you will have healthy Christians and healthy children, children, people, um, young women who understand how to keep themselves. Okay. Young men who know how to, 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 to what to look for in a woman and a woman to know what to look for in a man. It's the same thing. You got to know, just like you got to know, you know, like people, they, they think, you know, uh, just having two parents and on a physical sense is the only um, importance. But the spiritual sense helps you be able to choose and pick the right male or female for your life. That, that they are a whole person when you get them. Whoa. <laughs> Cause I don't want a half of a I don't want a half of a woman I don't want a half of a man a woman a woman don't want a half of a man they don't want three thirds of a man they want a man that's whole how do you get a whole man you must understand that we are threefold nature okay body spirit and soul if that man ain't taking care of all three of those things then you get in one or one third of the man. Or two thirds of the man, you you decide what you want. And a lot of these young ladies keep getting these two thirds and the one thirds of a man because they don't. Oh well, you know, I don't want him to be a church person. You know, I want him to be a thug coming from the club. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what you get. Don't get upset because now he won't go hang out. Don't get upset. When you're not complete, because if he's not spiritually complete, then he can never help you become complete. <laughs> Hello. I don't know how I got there, but hey, listen. <laughs> you want you want you want God to work it out for you. You want your relationships with, with, with people to work out right. Understand what you're dealing with. And understand where 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 it is it's important for you to have every aspect of that person, okay, attended to. If that it, it it kills me. You ask a young girl, well, you know, so you love him? Yeah, he treats me right. Okay, um, is he saved? Well, um, not really, but um, he goes to church. How you go to church? Anyway, say. <laughs> so you already know what's coming next because if he ain't saved, then that means he he's not governed by the Holy Spirit. So he's definitely gonna want to be. He goes definitely gonna want to get with you. So the question is, are you saved? <laughs> Boy, oh boy, it's getting hot up in here. <laughs> How many more questions you got? Because I got to probably go get my cord. I left the cord upstairs. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, I can answer them all. It's not a problem. Just oh, nine, nah, ten more? Okay, yeah, no me, problem. Give me a second. I guess I'll just speak um, for those who don't know. I'm actually making this video with Bishop for my YouTube channel. I had a bunch of the ladies that watch me on YouTube and on Instagram send me in their questions, and I got a total of 22 questions. So that's what we're doing today. I'm going to then take this video and then download it and then upload it to my YouTube channel for everyone to watch. And I see my sis Angela is on. So hey, Ange. 